Hi guys, I'd like to take a second to tell you about our very first sponsor here on Menace to Sobriety. I thought long and hard about who to choose to put on this podcast and put out to you guys. And I've picked this for a very specific reason, because it's brilliant. I want to introduce you to the Morale app. This is an app where you can literally send great morale to your buddies. You can anonymously ping over messages to lift your friend's morale. It's brilliant. Ideal for this podcast and the viewers. The Morale app is an antidote to social media and an app designed to enhance human connection with your friends and combat loneliness. It's one of the biggest aids to mental fitness and for many people in recovery is a sense of community, closeness and connection with others and Morale is designed with the user in mind, not like other social media platforms. Download the app and add your friends to improve yours and there's motivation every day. And if you need a code to use, Use this one right here. This is my special code. The morale app. Basically, ping your pal some morale. Just a menace. Ju- just a menace. Just a menace. Menace to sobriety. Just a menace. I started sniffing MCAT. MCAT. I remember MCAT. I remember that yeah, sh- dirty, horrible oh, yeah. shit, innit? Great. <laughs> I remember ringing a dealer. And he's like, mate, I ain't got any. I remember just like crying on the phone. But I'm crying because I can't get any. Yeah. I'm so desperate. Mm. Go have a beer, go to the next group lie go oh yeah no i'm doing really well things are really great then and then once the group sessions were done go and get absolutely smashed and then go home and then you know mum or mum or dad will go oh, was today i'll be going oh yeah the sessions were great but you were drunk smashed off on face when you go through the program it's like you realize that it isn't the drinking drugs is you it's my head mm. so i believe that i was born you know with this addict Hello and welcome to another episode of Menace to Sobriety with your host with the most, and I don't mean to boast, it's me, Daniel O'Reilly, aka Dapper Laughs, aka Kid Frankie from back in the day, aka Jim and Steve, aka the Sesh Gremlin, aka, um, if you're proper old school, um, what was the gaming one, the gaming one, you've got to look this one up, Gaming Geek, uh, I can't remember, anyway. I'm here, I'm feeling sexy, I'm fresh, back from Mexico, as you can tell by the boyish tan, the good looks that complement my blue eyes, so I wore a blue jumper, and as you can see, I'm buzzing, I'm really excited to be back, now listen, I've got a brand new episode here for you, um, after the success of um, the episode that i done with Alex Drummond, um, it sort of inspired me to get more average, I hate to say average, but every day people on um i felt that the response from that episode um with alex not being um in the media being a celebrity or being an industry expert i really felt that that related and and, um connected with people so i'm going to try and go down that route a little bit more and that's what inspired me to get this gentleman on uh the podcast um he owns a scaffolding company he's a lad's lad and he's been on quite a journey and um yeah i've i've had a look into his story but tried not to delve too much into it so i can discover it with you and hopefully it inspires welcome to the menace to sobriety stage harry tufts hello harry thank you very much for having me on mate all right good you're a bit nervous <laughs> in yourself i'm feeling a bit nervous i'm no, excited though you're excited mm. i've got to say so you're like a scaffolder you've got a scaffolding you're a proper lad's lad so yeah you know you know don't don't you know you're in good company <laughs> You know, I'm a bit of a geezer. John, the producer, he's not so much a geezer, but... I'm a nerd. I'm that gaming nerd you were talking about. He's like the yeah. gaming nerd over there, but he might chip in and give us some uh, give us some facts and stuff. But um, Alex, mate, first off, uh, thank you for sharing your story with me. Um, I get a lot of people that... Uh, everyone that sort of contacts me now and says I want to come on, I'm like, just send me over your stuff. Let me have a little read. And... Um, and yeah, man, quite the journey, quite the mad journey. But before we start, you were kind of insinuating that we'd met before. T- talk me through that, go on. So I bumped into a Waterloo station. I think it's the Weatherspoons upstairs. Is it the Weatherspoons? Oh, is shit, the... was this back when I was drinking? Yeah, yeah. They, yeah, they, I probably a... won't remember. Bar up there. This is years ago. Mm. And I was going to London, but we stopped in this bar. Yeah. And I see you in there, and obviously uh, I had Snapchat and all that at the time with you on it. Right. And you was putting up Snapchats of you in there. Oh yeah, and I was thinking like, and I saw you, and you was just drinking, and I kept sending beers over. Oh really? To you, and you was like, and then we was, I was with a group of lads, and we were all laughing, and you was like, "What's going on?" You carried on drinking, and, and, then, and then you kept looking around, and in the end, I put my hand up, and you was like, "Yes, go on." <laughs> <laughs> oh fucking cringe. Oh mate, do you ever look back on moments like that and think, "Oh," or do you uh, think, "Ah, that was nah, it was good." Was I on my own? Yeah. Fucking yeah, say yeah, to me. Yeah. No friends. My, on my own in Weatherspoons, just necking three yeah, pints. Yeah, yeah. Not, no, they could have been, well, I was probably hoping they were full of MDMA or something. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Um, 
Wow, okay. Did we meet then? We met, did we? Well, I, said, yeah, I went over and I chat with you briefly, yeah. but then you was, I think you was going on somewhere else and that was kind of it. But, um, yeah. but it just goes to show, man, that, you know, my memory's shot to bits, but I do meet a lot of people, but your face is kind of familiar. You've got one of them haircuts, like a Lego man. That's just to break the <laughs> ice. Just breaking the ice. All right, talk to me, man. So, um, first off, nice to meet you again. Yeah, thank you. Sober. Yes, mate. How how long have you been sober? Four years. So four years, February 25th. How old are you now? 26. So you're only young. You're young for, to go sober. Mm. So you're 26. So you went sober when you were, I'm going to work this out, 24. 22. 22. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> 22. Yeah. You went sober. Um, that's young. Mm. So that tells me that things went wild for you quick. Mm. Bad. So tell, so tell me how you started, who you were when you were younger and how you got into it all. And, you know, just talk me through your journey, first of all. I think uh, I was obviously growing up, fairly normal family. My yeah. and dad were quite big, big drinkers. The whole family were. Um, and I started, I suppose for me, looking back, growing up, I was very obsessive as a kid. Right. So I was like bang on sports. You mm. know, maybe every sport. Yeah. I was like playing ping pong. Do you know what I mean? Anything. Swimming. Mm. I was just doing it all. Football, cricket. Um, and I was so obsessed about it. I was constantly, if I would stop doing one thing, I'd be doing another. Mm. Um, I started playing for Fulham. Um, Fulham, uh, I don't know, I think I was about 12 or something like that. Um, and honestly, I thought I'd made it. Do you know what I mean? I thought that this was going to be my life. This is what I wanted to do. Um, so I played with them, I think it was three years or something like that. Fulham, Fulham under, t- what, what age? It would have been under 12s or something like that. Right. And- um and I thought, I'd, you know, this... And they'd, they'd, they pegged you for the... Yeah. I'm like, right. you know what I mean? And I thought, this is it. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I had all the gear on and all that. And you just think, as a kid, this was, like, amazing. Yeah. Um, And I got to, I think it was about 15. Might have been younger than that, 14 or something like that. And they sent me a letter to say that I was too small right. to play for this club anymore. Right, okay. And it broke my heart. Mm. Absolutely broke my heart. And... um. I just didn't want to play football after that. I thought, no, fuck it. I'm too short. Do you know what I mean? blah de blah And I started going out with my friends, as you do, and we just started smoking a bit of weed, drinking. Mm. And these were all things that, while I was playing football, I was like, I'll never do that. Do you know what I mean? I'll never... When I, some of my friends were smoking weed, I was like, I ain't going to smoke weed. It's fucking... That's for mugs and all that shit. Um, but yeah, I started smoking a bit of weed, started drinking. But for me, drink was my, like, main thing. Mm. Every opportunity, even at that age... I wanted to drink mm. because I like the effects produced by alcohol. Do you know what yeah. I mean? I like the way it made me feel. It made me feel loose. It made me feel comfortable. Yeah. Um, and I think slowly for me, after that, I started sniffing MCAT. Fucking hell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's quite a jump, isn't it? Yeah, so yeah, what, yeah. what sort of age were you when you... MCAT, I remember MCAT. MCAT... I remember that dirty, dirty horrible oh, yeah. shit, innit? Great. I, <laughs> but I can't... But before, before I asked you, how old were you when you started sniffing that then? 16. I can remember I went into um, I went into town once, into Shoreditch once with my pals. I don't know if I can say who they are, but uh, it reminds me of you, actually. You probably don't watch this, but I've got a good pal called Tommy. It reminds me of you. I bet you like a scrap and all, didn't you? Or did yeah. you back in the day? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, but um, yeah, we was all racking them up in, in Shoreditch and um, he was like, don't worry, this one ain't gear. This one ain't gear. And I was like, what is it? And he's like, it's MCAT. And I can remember... I was, I was young as well. I was, but not as young as that. Maybe about twenty-three or something like that. And I sniffed a line of it, and I thought the fucking buildings were falling down. They yeah, were just looking yeah, all wobbly. Yeah. And I was with a, out with a bird, and I ended up saying, "Get in the cab. I want to go back." And I pissed myself in the fucking cab. <laughs> that sounds about right. Yeah, so I pissed myself in the cab, and she said, "Let me out." So I never saw <laughs> her again. And I got to Captain Common, and ended up sitting on Captain Common crying for about four hours because it was about fucking. <laughs> Six o'clock in the morning, people were going for jogs, and I was like, oh, "Me, no, mate. never done it again." Oh, you uh, never done it again? No, but you, you, you went through that sort of experience and carried yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh mate, dirty I was shit. smashing it. Go on, it. talk so, to me about that. Then, how did you get into that? So, I started uh, scaffolding apprenticeship at okay. the age of sixteen. Um, a group of lads I was with, they're all older, so I was knocking about with them, going going into pubs at a young age. Yeah, um, and you say, yeah, the MCAT got uh, MCAT got brung out, so I started sniffing that, and obviously. It just started on like a Friday, doing a Friday thing, staying up, and then it went to like Friday, Saturday, and then it was like all the way, you know, it's like going all the way through the weekend. Oh. This MCAT. But it was so cheap to buy the MCAT. The high's not like Coke though, is it? No, it's really intense. Really intense. Um, it's, yeah, it's just, it's one of the best buzzes I've ever had. Oh, see, I, I could never get into it. I, well, I think it's because I pissed myself the first time, but 
But yeah, so that was you, and then you were you, so that must have been destroying your mental health. But oh, not knowing mate. about it, but yeah, you, yeah. You, you, so you were, you, so you were young, and you were doing all weekenders, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, to, to, how did that progress? So from the MCAT, I think that's when kind of the alcohol for me really stepped up a level, mm. and it was like you know going to pub after work. But I feel like in the industry that I'm in, yeah, I know scaffold, you know Chazza. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've got yeah. to stop interrupting you. Sorry, go that's on. cool. That's cool. Yeah, um, go on. From that for, at that age, it was like you looked up to them older people, mm. and it was like you know if you're not going to the pub after work, then who are you? Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like you don't even bother coming in tomorrow if you ain't going to the pub tonight. Yeah. So it's kind of that mentality. So I got into that, going to the pub, and I just started having a few, but obviously then the MCAT would come out. Oh, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And it was like a, I don't really. It's, it's it was a crazy time really, but I was so young that I really looked up to everyone around me. So I thought, yeah. like, you got to do this. Yeah, I don't think there's. An, uh, again, I always say this because people always comment. Let people talk, but I like to have. I like it to be like a bit of a because I'm I'm learning f about you, mm. and I want to sort of contribute to it as well. And um, so I hope you don't mind me jumping in a little bit. But the um, the to me when I was that age and I was doing that. It just felt completely like the norm. I, and I don't think, looking back on it, I know it sort of led to worse things, but we can't hate on them times because no, they course. were, they were, they, that's, that, you know. Mate, I had some great times. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Do you know what I mean? And I, I'm not sitting here now saying that yeah. at that age it was shit yeah. because it wasn't. But, and, and then we got, like, I talk about my mate Chazar because he sort of really highlights um, scaff life, mm. uh, being a scaffolder and stuff like that. And he tells me stories about how he was, he'd be doing packet while fucking on the job, do you know oh, what I yeah. mean? Drinking and doing packet on the job. And even, and I know some other people that even play, pay their employees in packet. Yeah, of course. <laughs> cool. so, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, I know that that well. industry, especially, I think all of the trades industries, and you know, because we're all working class, most of us are working class lads, men. Mm -hmm. um, but especially, I think, around the scaffold industry, it's a real fucking tough man, strong, because it's our graft, isn't it? Yeah, it is, yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, so carry on, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so from the I'll say the MCAT, it was the pub, it, pretty, not every night, but pretty much every night. But obviously on the weekends, I would 100% be smashing it. Um, and I think it got to a point where I was kind of like, you know, I want more. And I, I don't know why I, I felt like that, but it was when, for me, the coke came in. I had a bit of money in my pocket, do you know what I mean? A lot of my mates, obviously at that age, we didn't even have jobs. Mm. So I'm hanging about with older lads, I've got, I'm earning money. So I then started to buy Coke. You know, it was almost like a thing in my head of like, one day I'll get a bag of Coke. Mm. Do you know what I mean? That was like, so I then got some Coke and then I felt like the big man because everyone else is sniffing MK and I was like, I've got proper Coke. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> giving it the big ones. Yeah. Um, and it kind of went from there really. But I say it, it didn't go straight from there into mm. full blown addict. Do you know what I mean? But I was sniffing a lot more. And I suppose it got to a point where I was like, you know, before I was going out, I was preempting it, so I'd be buying it before I've even gone out. You mm. know, like normally you go out, have a few beers, and people are like, should we get a bit in? Mm. I was thinking, right, no, I need to get some before I go out tonight. So then I'd be saying, they'd be like, oh, should we get a bit in? I'm like, no, I've already got some. They're like, what? Yeah. So, you know, I didn't look at it like that, but I thought, you know, I've got my own here. Fuck off, I don't want to share it. Mm. That was kind of my mentality, and I suppose from there on, it started to become like, I was doing it on my own in the week, Mm. Do you know what I mean? So normally you'd go out of everyone, get on it or whatever, go home. But then it was for me, it was like doing a bit on mine before I went out. Yeah, that's how it Having starts. a cheeky one, do you know what I mean? Doing a bit on your own, getting to the pub and being all like fucking feeling horrible, mm. trying to have conversations with people and they're like, you feel like you can't even talk. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And um, it just escalated really, I suppose. You know, I'm not, I'm not blame. I blame myself for this. You know, yeah. I don't blame anyone else. But you know, when I find that when you're an addict, you attract addicts. Mm. You you give out. I don't know whether you go out an aura, but no matter where I went, I would always end up with the wrong ones. Mm. And I loved it because mm. everyone we was all on the same level. We all wanted to do these fucking things. Mm. You know what I mean, we always wanted to be outlast. Um, and I was always taking people hostage. That's what I call it. Do you know what I mean? I'll be at work and be going. You going to the pub? They'll be like, No, no, no. I like, come on, come for one. And mm. they're like, oh, Go on then. Mm. I knew getting them in there because you wanted to fucking course, sesh. Yeah. I don't want to be on my own. I don't want to be that fucking loner that's yeah sniffing gear and yeah. drinking on your own, so, chatting, chatting to strangers. Yeah, getting people in. Yeah, and it would always be like you know, even in my head, I'd go there and I'd be thinking, I'm only going to have a couple. Mm. I never ever would just have a couple. Never ever. Have you got ADHD? I haven't been diagnosed no. with it. No. Um, do you have start? Do you struggle focusing on things and sticking uh, to one thing, or do you find do you find once you once you're working on something, you can focus on it? And do you have lots of things going on or just no i do have lots of things going on yeah, yeah. i'm very like 
Yeah. I'm all or nothing. Yeah, you know yeah. I mean? I'm very much all the or nothing. The only reason I ask is because, you know, the obsessive side of things, like the obsessive, the, the obsessiveness with the sports and stuff like that, and also the emotional connection the, or the, emo the emotional response that you had from being dropped from your football, which mm. was kind of like, fuck you to the world. Mm. Um, I get, I suffer with that very much. Well, I did when I dr drank, you know, a lot of my drinking and, and stuff would be the same. Would be if something went wrong, it'd be a heavy drinking response yeah, and stuff yeah, like yeah. that. Um, just looking back then, so you're, you're saying that, you know, because I know that things turn very dark for you very quickly. And you, um, you were you you were using sometimes before you went out. Um, were you ever staying at home and using, just not going out? Did you ever get to that point? Oh, yeah. Yeah, 100%. Like I say, it kind of like the progression of it was, you know, like when I speak to a lot of other addicts, but most of the progression is almost the same. Mm. You know what I mean? You progress through this. Um, and in the end, ultimately, you end up on your own using. Yeah. And that for me was, you know, right at the end of my using for a long time, mm. I would use on my own and I didn't want to use with anyone else. Yeah. It was weird. like dark 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 horrible shit mm. you know and um were you living at home at the time yeah i was living at my mum and dad's house and did they know what you were going through i don't think they did they knew that i was drinking a lot they knew that i don't think they knew the extent of what was going on behind them curtains in that bedroom mm. um because what was you doing just like it was coming it, so you'd stop going to the pub after work yeah 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 so what i was doing was i was it got to a point for me where i was using in the day so, at work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and obviously I weren't sleeping. So it was like, get up in the morning, have a line. You know, I wouldn't even get up. I'd get out of bed because I hadn't even slept. Do you know what I mean? It weren't like wake up. It was like, you know, get up. And obviously my head would be like, right, you need to have one to make you feel better. Do one and it would make you feel worse because I hadn't slept. Mm. Go to work. And I think, you know, all the, throughout the day, I'll be thinking, oh, I ain't fucking doing it anymore. Like, I need to stop tonight. I ain't going to bother tonight. You know, I need to fucking stop. I need to sleep. And then by like 12 o'clock, you start to feel a little bit better. And then someone's like, oh, I'm going to the pub after work. And I'm like, yes, I'm fucking going there. And, yeah. and you have one or two and then back on back straight it. back on it. Yeah. That's dark. Yeah, yeah, but oh, mate, it got so dark so quick. And I don't know when I crossed that line of, you know, of just it being fun. Yeah, but it wasn't fun. You know, mm. I, I got to a point where I didn't want to do it. I, you know, I remember once I was in my mum and dad's garden actually, and I remember ringing a dealer, and he's like, "Mate, I ain't got any." I remember started crying on the phone, and I was like, even my even my head, I was thinking, like, "What are you doing, you dickhead?" Oh my god! And I was like, I was actually crying, and he was like, "Hello," and I'm like crying on the phone. I was like, "Can you get me any?" Oh my yeah, god! Yeah, yeah. Like, think, yeah, you know I mean, and he's like, "Hello." <laughs> and I put the phone down and I, I was even after that, I was thinking, like, what's going on? But th that was, I had a little sort of thought in my head and I was like, this is bad. This is bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I'm crying because I can't get any. And yeah. I'm so desperate. Sorry to laugh, but it just makes me, it no, makes no, no, me yeah. visualize it. You know what I mean? Um, but, and it was the voice that you done. And I just thought fucking, cause I, yeah. Yeah. I can imagine the despair of not, not just not getting any, but the despair of fucking looking at yourself going, what am I fucking doing? Standing yeah, in my yeah. mum and dad's garden, ringing yeah. a fucking dealer anyway, and then crying because he ain't yeah. got no gear. Um, how were your mood swings? Like, were you not fucking getting aggy and fucking oh, mate, yeah. aggressive and Massively. horrible to your family? And mate, I was I was horrible. I was just like a, I was so miserable. Mm. But at the same time, if I was around people, I sorry, I'd give it the big one. Mm. So if I was on my own, I wanted to fucking kill myself and I hated myself. But as soon as I had an audience. I was like, oh, yeah, if I, all right, yeah, mm. and all that shit. As soon as I was on my own again, it would be like, oh, what have I become? Mm -hmm. But it was like, you, I had, you know, I've heard people say it before that I had all these masks because mm. you know, I didn't know who I was. That's interesting. To I say didn't know that, where yeah. I was going. I had no purpose. Mm. So for me, you know, and I kind of accepted at a young age that I think it was probably about 18, you know, that this was me. And I accepted that I was either going to die an alcoholic or a drug addict mm. or. You know, it got to the point where I didn't care. Mm. So it was like, people were like, oh, mate, you need to slow down. I'd be like, fuck off. You need to fucking slow down or whatever. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So it was never like, I could never just have a conversation going, yeah, do you know what? I think I've, it was always like on the defensive. Like, fucking leave me alone. I'm just having fun. Everyone else is doing it. But everyone else weren't doing it. Yeah, that's the thing. I think that's the thing. I mean, when I look back as well, it was all well and good, like in the pub going for a cheeky bump. But th them times at home on your own, where, where, yeah, those times at home on your own where you're like, 
I don't know, when it comes to like three, four o'clock and you know you're going all the way through and you're like, yeah. oh, yeah. what am I doing? Why am I doing this? You can't sleep. And yeah. You get angry at yourself. Yeah, and it's the next day as well when you've got to make that decision. Do you carry on or do you fucking try and get out of go it? Through it yeah. yeah, you've got to go through it. So you spoke, you just said then that, you know, you, that, you know, you, you're like, oh, fucking, this is just, this is just the way it's going to be for me. I'm either just going to do this or I'm going to kill myself. But that was actually a real thing that happened to you, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, mm -hmm. Towards the end of my, well, I say towards the end of my using, right, right, just before I ended up in treatment. Um, obviously, we'll come on to that in a bit, but I ended up on a bridge. Fucking, um, yeah, I was done, mate. Yeah. Before we go to that, what talk to me about the week leading up to that, or what had gone on on the lead up to that, and how your mental state was, and the sort of deterioration. The only, I, I, and I hope it's all right to talk about. I don't want to. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I don't want. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, yeah, I don't. Yeah, no. This yeah. Is, but I, I, but I also want to. The, re, the only reason I ask is because I want anyone else out there that's feeling the same thing or that's leading themselves up the same path to be able to relate to what you're saying and, and take something from it. So how did that? I mean, how did that thought even come into your head? What, what was going on in your life at that time? Um, were there other factors? Yeah, hundred percent. I think there was a big build up of stuff that had happened. So I tried to get clean and sober. I tried it. I was going to this like a you know like a drug center thing, and it was like. There's a drug diary. Fill that out. And that was it. And I was like, shit's up. So I take, took the drug diary. You know, on a Monday, I've, I've, had, I've had half a gram bollocks. You know, I've had fucking two grams. I've had two cans of Stella. Do you know what I mean? So that was my, they were like, you know, I was so go in and I was just lying. I was just completely lying. Who was, told you to go to that? Um, no one really. I went, to, what happened was I went to the doctor's. My brother took me to the doctors. Um, well, he was worried about you. Because I was saying, like, I'm going to fucking kill myself. I can't do this anymore. I can't live like no. this. Mm. And he was like, you know, we can't have this. So I went to the doctors, sat there, and I was fucking, I was a mess, mate. Bearing in mind, right, I'm, I'm short. I'm like five foot nothing. Mm. I was 16 and a half stone, right? So I was fat as fuck. Um, from the beer. From the beer, not sleeping. Um... I went in there and I said to him, I'm going to kill myself. I said, unless something happens today, I will leave here and kill myself. And he's like, there's no funding. What the fuck? That's what he said. He goes, there's no funding, mate. And I was like, what do you mean there's no funding? So if I leave here and kill myself, you know, what's going to happen? I'm not trying to put that on him. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Because, you know, but you're asking questions. You I'm asking answers. for help. Yeah. For the first time in my life, I'm sat there saying, help me. You know, they should have put, they should, they should. I don't know if that's still the same now. I know that you can walk into, I know that you can actually walk into like A&E and, and speak to a, um, a mental health specialist, but they should seriously be taking you and putting you in a, in a psychiatric ward or they should be taking you and putting you in, into something, shouldn't yeah, they? That's yeah, what, yeah. I guess, I guess that's what you wanted when you walk through them doors, you wanted someone to go, right, we are going to fucking sort yeah. you out. Taken out of society. And that's what I needed. I literally needed to be taken out of society because not only was I dangerous to myself, but I was a fucking dangerous to other people because I was so, you know, I'm not, you know, I was violent. Do you know what I mean? And that's, I don't know whether it was the mood swings or whatever, but I just, I didn't care. Mm. You know, the fucking butt had been pushed a long time before that. Self-destructing. Yeah, hundred percent. So I was ready to do whatever, you know, whatever. And I suppose, you know, I was violent towards my dad, which, um, if looking back at it now, uh, mm -hmm. fucking breaks my heart to think about. Yeah, I can um, imagine. Sorry. That's, uh, that's okay, mate. That's okay. This is the tough part about sobriety is the yeah, clarity, yeah. looking back. Um, and, um, and was that just arguing at home? Let it out, mate. You can let it yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. No, I wouldn't, it wasn't even that. It was, it was more of a, I had so much resentment. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I, I just felt like everyone had wronged me. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like I talk about my parents, you know, they like to drink, but they can stop drinking. So if they want to have a drink, and I, I resented it, I then look back and thought, you know. You've been drinking around me, it's your yeah, fault. Yeah, but it's yeah. not. Of course it's not. No, no. Do you know what I mean? And it, that was something that I had so much resentment towards everyone around me, because I kind of like. Didn't want to blame yourself. Yeah, yeah. And because I, I was like, fuck off away from me. It's all your fucking fault. I'm like this. Or, you know, you've done this to me or you've done that. I never looked inside and, you know, I looked at me and thought, well, mm. You know, you're the one that's done this. Yeah, and the reason why we don't do that at the time is because if we look at ourselves, it means we've got to make changes, mm. and that's scary. Um, so you fell out of your father, and um, similar to me, I, 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 I hate thinking about my wedding because I was smashed. Mm. And um, 
when I see pictures and stuff, and it's probably the same for you now, you'll look back on them arguments, them things, and you'll think, fucking who was I? But, you know, before we carry on, you got to look at where you are now. It's a beautiful thing. How's your yeah. relationship with your father now? Oh, unbelievable. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And He's proud of you, right? It must yeah, be. Yeah, oh, mate, 100%. Both, both my parents are. And, mm. you know, I, I think, you know, when when that had all happened and, you know, I was, I say I was violent and that, even the next day I was just like... What am I doing? Yeah, but it was kind of like, I was so in denial about my addiction and, you know, where I was going and who I was becoming. Um, I just almost didn't want to look at it. Mm, yeah, of course not. So you you just, bury it. Yeah. yeah. And you're just like, that, right, and carry on, carry on going. So I think, you know, this was obviously the lead up to... So I said to everyone, I said, oh, I'm going to stop working. I was still working at this time. Um, still around them people, still having good days. And then yeah, the yeah. good days were turning into drinking days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think oh, I said to everyone, I was like, I'm going to have three weeks off work. I'm going to sort myself out. I'm going to, I was. I started going to these group sessions at this place, at this uh, drug centre. Um, and what, it was in the town centre. So I was going there. I was going into a group. There'd be like three groups each day. Go into the group, talk to people, go into the weather streams, have a pint of Stella as a reward. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> That's what I was. Yeah, yeah, Straight yeah. up. That's what I was doing. I was going in there. Going I love to, you, man. You remind me of me so much. Go and have a brilliant. beer, sit there yeah. on my own like I'm, like I'm 65 with a newspaper. Mm. Go have a beer, go to the next group, lie, go, oh, yeah, no, I'm doing really well. Things are really great. Then And then mm. once the group sessions were done, go and get absolutely smashed. And then go home, and then you know, mum or mum or dad will go. Oh, today I'll be going. Oh yeah, the sessions were great, but you were drunk, smashed off on face, and they'd just be like, "What the fuck?" Do you know what I mean? So it was just like a. And they could see this happening. <clears throat> yeah, towards the end of it, I'll say they they knew that there was a problem. But as I said, I trying to speak to me at that time, as you probably well know, you know, it ain't gonna happen. No. So you were doing the groups. Uh, I'm, I'm a firm believer of the the uh our addictions and stuff that happens to us fucking gets really bad uh, at, at the moment you realize you can't control it um just to just to compare it was i went sober and then when i went back when i said to my missus i can go back i spoke about it loads and then when i went back and it excelled uh very similar to w w what you were talking about when you tried to seek help and it didn't change that's when the fucking that's when it's like this is some scary shit yeah and, and it's like a real make or break moment for you. It's like, you kind of like, oh my God, everything in my life has got to change or fuck it. I'm just going to carry on till it's yeah. over. Um, and, and, and that's, that's the crossroads I guess you were at. And then, so what, what was that day like for you? The day that you ended up on the bridge? What was that in the midst of the, the, the time we're talking about now? Yeah. So I'd say is that the, so I had the three weeks off. Um, I said I was going to do the three weeks. Then obviously I smashed myself to fucking pieces. Because you were off, you didn't have work. Yeah. So every day, you know, there was a pub that I was in and I remember, man, I was in this pub and I'm, I was crawling around. I was that fucked. I was crawling around asking, because I, I was drinking Guinness. Because prior, so when I was like 19, I was, I was drinking Cronenberg constantly every day in the mornings and all that. And I ripped all my stomach lining and um, oh my God. I went to the doctors and they were like, you need to stop drinking. And I was like, I ain't stopping drinking. I said, but what else can I drink? And he said, well, you can drink Guinness. Hold on a second. How the fuck does beer rip your stomach line in? I don't know, mate. It must have been the acid or, you know, something, whatever was in the beer. And because I was drinking so much of it, that it... So sort of, how old were you then? Uh, I think I was at, I was either 18 or 19. Fucking hell, mate. And yeah. you were drinking beer in the morning every day? Yeah, yeah. I was getting up, having a beer or I'd have a cider. Nice and fruity, you know what I mean? Start the morning. Oh, fucking hell, mate. Don't. We'll end up down the pub. <laughs> I'm joking. No, yeah. Okay, so... Fucking hell. So, so, so... And the Guinness. They said Guinness was good Yeah, so I then started drinking Guinness. And that, for me, I started drinking Guinness and my stomach was fine. So you're like, this ain't even like drinking. Yeah, I was like, this is great. Do you know what I mean? Because I was having such bad, like, guts and all that through mm. through this Cronenberg or whatever. Um, so I was like, yeah, don't drink fizzy drinks or drink fizzy lager or whatever, just drink Guinness. So I started drinking Guinness and I was smashing, do you know what I mean? Like probably, if I was going to the pub in the evening, I'd probably have 14, 15 Guinnesses. Shit loads of packet. Fuck. Carry on the night. But I'm, I, you know, I've stayed up for like four days straight before. But why were you calling around on the floor? Just fucked? Fucked. I had such bad psychosis. I thought I had like spiders in that on me. Do you know what I mean? I was like always, and like my missus can vouch for that as well. Do you know what I mean? I, I'd be in bed and she, and I'd, be, I'd get up out of bed She's like, what are you doing? I'm like looking under the bed. Oh, there's mice under here. She's like, what? Because oh. I, I honestly could see these fucking spiders. 
No, my, I was just fucked, mate. And they, they didn't throw you out of the pub. They were just like, oh, he's calling around the floor again. Sorry, he's all right. He's, yeah. <laughs> He's got people putting their drinks on you, thinking you're a fucking table. Yeah. That's mental, mate. Yeah, crawling around the pub, like going up to the bar, saying another Guinness. Obviously, there was times when they were like, look, mate, you've had enough, get out. Never barred, though. You were putting too much money behind the fucking bar. You know what I mean? So, yeah, go on. So, that's, you were there. Yeah, so then, obviously, um, that's fucking what you got hell. real bad. And at the end of that three weeks, I was just in absolute pieces, mate. You know, I, and... I just wanted to die, you know, in, the, in that three weeks, you know, every morning I was getting up and I didn't want to wake up, you know, I wish I hadn't woke up. It was just like... Oh, it's like a merry-go-round, isn't it? I've got to do this all again. And, you know, it weren't like people say, oh, you got a choice. And if I had a choice, I wouldn't be where I am. I wouldn't have ended up where I was, you know what I mean? There isn't a choice. Mm. I think, I think, and sorry to stop you, but I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to, and I, like I say, like I say, I get a lot of people commenting and just saying, let them tell their story. But when I, when I think of little nuggets of information that can help people that are listening, I just want to chuck them in. And I feel like that roller coaster that you were on there, uh, what I've learned since I've been doing these podcasts is what a lot of people don't understand. We'd be able to understand it. You'll be able to understand it when you think about it. When you fucking absolutely smash the granny out yourself in the pub and then you're getting on the packet and everything, the anxiety level that, that, that you've got to live with, mm. like when you wake up is another level. And you know, they say hair of the dog. The truth is the only thing that levels your chemicals out is a fucking beer. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, that's why a lot of people that become alcohol or drug dependent, you know, they, they get physically ill when they try and come off it. But like, you know, when you're that age and when you're going through that, you don't look at it like you're an alcoholic because what you look at it like, especially if you've got three weeks off work, you wake up and you're like, fucking hell, that was fucking awful. I feel like shit, I don't want to do it again, but you know what? I need to sort me out, just a yeah, fucking yeah, yeah. beer. Yeah. I just need a beer to sort me out. And you have one beer to sort you out. And I don't know if you're anything like me. If you manage to, if you used to manage to... Uh, Go like, if you had a massive, massive session, I mean, it sounds like you were just going through. But I always used to have like, a, if I had a session over the weekend and I'd be like 100%, I ain't fucking doing that again. I've had a massive bust up with the missus, done something wrong. Monday, Tuesday, feeling like shit. I'm not having the hair of the dog. I'm going to get fucking through it. Wednesday comes, you start feeling good. Thursday, you feel fine. You're like, do you know what? Yeah. I'm going back down the pub. Right. Um, but in a short space of time, that that was happening. You, you're waking up in the morning, you're having a drink to square yourself off. And where you were thinking, you fuck this, by the afternoon, you're like, oh, man, fuck it. I just want to get drunk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because it was like, there was nothing else. Do to do, I mean? yeah. No, that's what it felt. That's, yeah, It I'll was like, that. there's nothing else to do. And people were like, just go and do do this. Do I'm, what? Yeah. Yeah, like, I, c I can't think of anything yeah, else. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I just, and I, I suppose... I didn't want, you get that thing in your head of like, yeah, but the people down the pub, they're like family. I mean, you give it all that shit, do you know what I mean? But yeah, it's bollocks. Yeah, yeah, of course it is. And I think like, you know, you, you have the same conversation with the same people oh, talking God. about shit. And it was just, like, I was supposed, I looked up to them people and I thought, they are living the life. Do you know what I mean? But then when I look at it now, the family hate them. You yeah. know, they've got no money. All they do is spend their life at the pub. Yeah. And I aspired to be that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And very quickly, I started to become that at such a young age because I was like, we're going to the pub, that's it. You know, there's no, you know, yeah. like people used to do back in the 60s, like every bloke would go to the pub. Yeah. That was like my mentality. Well, that, like, that is that is our mentality, but the, you've just summed it up. The weird, the weird thing about it is, is the weird thing about it is, is like oh, even me thinking about it now when I look back, that's why I never wanted to stop because I was like, well, what am I going to do after work? Mm -hmm. What am I going to do when I've been stressed? What am I going to do when I'm celebrating? What am I going to do at the weekend? What am I going to do? And the truth, well, what are you going to do? You're going to fucking live your life. Like, like now, I, like I love being at home. I love being with my missus and my kids and stuff like that. But when you're a young lad like you were, and the, 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 you know you're ill, you know things are going bad, but the only, the only way to fix yourself is to take everything away from you that you enjoy. How are you supposed to make that choice? It's fucking hard, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and I think obviously it did, you know, from from 18 of drinking all the time, you know, and, and doing all the drugs and then, you know, got to, you know, I, don't get me wrong, I had some good times in them. Yeah, of course, of course. Of you course. know, I'd done festivals and all stuff like that, but even when I went to this festival, I would never use normally. Do you know what I mean? Other people were getting on it, mm. but I weren't even eating. Do you know what I mean? I'd be flat out mm. as soon as I get up in the morning. I was like that. People would be like, I need to go and get some food. And I'm thinking, shut up. Like, this is fucking... Yeah, I was like that. Whenever I went away to IB for and stuff like that, I'd, I'd be fucked the whole time. Yeah, whole lot, but real fucked, you yeah. know. Like, And it got to the point for me where where I was using so much, I couldn't even speak. 
Do you know? Do you know? What I'm, do you, yeah. Have you ever been like exactly when you're mean. like, you know, your yeah. mouth's so fucking. But they, they reckon that's because there's fucking rat poison in the gear. That yeah, you're doing. probably. Yeah. And you're just not fucking twitching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, I used to go through phases with my mates used to say, call me the arm tapper because I'd be like fucking tapping them on the arm and telling them fucking shit loads of stories. Yeah, yeah. And then the tapping and the talking would stop and I'd just be there like that. That's it, yeah. Yeah. But I've been at parties before. But that was actually a good time. <laughs> <laughs> no, but oh God. I've been at parties before, literally with loads of people there and I've been sat on the sofa like that. Yeah. Yeah, it fucks you up. Yeah, I know people are having a good time and they're drinking away, doing a little bit, and I'm just like, so I couldn't stop. So even though I'm like that, I'm still doing it. I'm still going for it. Yeah, it's. Um, do you know what it's? It, it's the simplest way to look at it is it's just chasing dopamine hits, mm. and what, what all you're doing is you're chasing. I mean, I'm the same with you with coffee now. I'll fucking bang on the coffee. I, I, I like I get my dopamine from different places. When when I when like I've just celebrated six months. How, how so? But you know, four years. Four years. Yeah. Wow, man. Let me shake you around. Thank like you, that. Mate, First of all, that's fucking. You know, takes. You know, someone put a tweet up the other day to me saying you're a fucking pussy just because you can't handle your drinking drugs. You're a pussy, right? Uh, and I thought, uh, and I just thought to myself, no, nah. no. He said you're weak. You're you're weak because you can't handle your. Dr-. And I think the real strength people won't realise the strength that it takes to fucking go sober. 100%. It's so fucking hard, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So your your four years coming from the background that you come from, uh, that takes some real fucking strength. You should be proud of yourself. But I think that what people don't realise is they, they get sucked into the to the to the thing that it's cocaine. Mm. You know, it's cocaine and it's drink, right? But the truth of it is you're just fucking chasing a high. You're just chasing yeah. like a feel good feeling. Mm. Um and the more that obviously you were in a dark place, you were trying to fix yourself. The more that you're chasing that high, the fucking deeper the lows are. So, you know, you're going, Argh! and and um, one thing I learned from the podcast, sorry to go on, one thing I learned from the previous podcast was that the more you deplete your serotonin, is it serotonin and dopamine? Is it serotonin is, and yeah, dopamine yeah, and yeah, stuff yeah. like that. The more that you're fucking caning, mm. the, the, you know, those, those chemical releases from doing the drugs, and your body's like, we got fucking nothing left for you. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like fucking Ian Bill in East Tennessee. I got nothing left. <laughs> That's your receptors in your mind going, I got nothing yeah, left. Yeah, right? And you're just squeezing the last little bit of feel good, but going, nah, but yeah. fucking it takes more and more and more. Yeah. But the da- like, there's loads of down, there's loads of fucking come down left. That's yeah. endless. Yeah. Your come down can go, your, set, your height can only push so far, but your come down can go to fucking the bridge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So tell me how, how, how talk me through that last bit then so I think as a bit with a build up of all the stuff and I was done mate I don't enough and I couldn't I think because I couldn't see a future for myself without drink or drugs mm. but at the same time I couldn't keep doing what I was doing I was sick of it you know I was, before I was doing I'd do a line I think for me at the end the best bit about doing gear was, was the phone call yeah going I'm thinking oh it's come in you know what I mean all that shit it's, it's on the build up yeah, yeah it is and then I'd get it chop it up fucking great and then do it, and then it was just like, oh, that, fuck. That's the anticipatory response. So that's, you basically get a massive dopamine spike that motivates you to do the thing. So it's like when you know something's coming, that's like the biggest spike when they measure your brain chemistry. So that's- Is that, that true? Yeah, really? Yeah, that, that's it's mad. called the anticipatory response. It's crazy. So it's like when you get that, that's why, that's why like in supermarkets, they have like the chocolate right by the thing, because it just gives you that little, you have, when you eat the chocolate, it's fine, but when you see it and you get the idea, that's the biggest spike. But. Is that like a bit similar to, and not to lower the tone, is that a bit, a bit similar to when you get horny? Uh, I've, I will definitely like, if you're, if you're on a promise or something, you know something's going to happen, you get a boner just thinking about the night ahead. Yeah. Yeah, I got that today on the way. I mean, no. I got, yeah. <laughs> no, but it's true, isn't it? Like yeah. when you're going to link up, that's why, I'm sorry to go off a bit, yeah. but that's why um, you should, if, 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 you know, you're linking up with Vern and she's coming over, never have to pre-wank to try and last longer because yeah. then you cancel the, yeah. Anyway, what am I going on? That hasn't happened in 10 years. Um, but um, that's really interesting. So you're saying that the the anticipation, like what you just said, you you, you know, yeah, the, the, the you, oh, someone made a call. Do you want to get it? Yeah, go on yeah. in. Fucking let's get buzz, it. it. Yeah, all right, cool. Let's get it in. Let's get it in. And you rack up, you sniff the line. You're like, okay, now I feel like fucking paranoid as fuck. Back to that same mm. hole that mm. you're in. Do you know what I mean? It's horrible. It's just, when yeah. I think about it now, I do think to myself, like, how the fuck did I even end up like that? And, how, you know, who was I? You know what I mean? How did I, how did I even feel like that? Yeah. Because I honestly, like, I just did not want to live. And I think to be in, I know there's so many people that go through this, but to be in that hole, you know, unless you've been in it, you know, no one will understand that the feeling of like, you feel like you're constantly being crushed. Do you know what I mean? And it was like, um, 
I just couldn't do it anymore, mate. I was, I was really, really just done with it, all, all of it. I was done with the drink, done with the drugs. It got just before, you know, being on that bridge, I, I stopped drinking because I was just purely using Coke. Because every time I was um, drinking, I was being sick. So I stopped drinking and I was just doing co Coke. I found that it made me even more paranoid. Of course it did, yeah. You know what it's like if you don't drink and you do it? Everything's yeah. all like fucking 100 mile an hour and you're all... And my psychosis is so bad. You know what I mean? I remember my old man. I was um, I was out in the garden at like two in the morning, naked, looking for rats. What? And he's look, he looked at and he's like, what are you doing? He must have been so worried for yeah. you. Yeah. And I'm out in the garden mm. looking for rats. Why was you naked? Because you've been bashing. I don't know. <laughs> Fuck knows. I can't even, you know what I mean? It's just like, so, you know. That's fucking crazy, mate. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy, mate. Wow. That's, see, I never got, m m my psychosis was more like paranoia about my missus having the help with me or fucking yeah, cheating yeah, yeah, or yeah, yeah. whatever. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I'd wake up in the morning, but I never had that because I never really sniffed without drink, but I never had that deep psychosis and like you were just gone. Real, yeah, oh, mate, yeah. I say, like, you know, stuff like that was happening. I just couldn't live with myself anymore. I really couldn't. So that day, you know, just a normal day, really, in terms of using and drinking, but a lot heavier with the Coke. The night before? Yeah, kind of like, I don't know. I wouldn't say that I knew what I was going to do, but I'd been thinking about it for a long time. You know, and I'm, you know, there's no roast for me to go. I need to kill myself. And... Um, so yeah, I ended up walking up to this bridge, which isn't actually far from my dad's house, and I just remember fucking crying my eyes out on the way up there. But this was was this you'd woke up on like a come down and No, didn't... I was this is while I was on gear. Oh man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is probably like early evening. Um and I'm done. I'm going up to this bridge, got up there, you know what I mean? And I was sat, you know, you know, it's just, I was sat up on the thing, you know, with the cars going below me and that, and I was just thinking like just fucking crying my eyes, I was just thinking, I can't, you know, I'm done. Can't do this, can't do this. Um, you know, and everything flashes through your head, do you know what I mean? Like every everyone you've let down. Do you know what I mean? I let my missus down, do you know I mean? she left me at that point. Um, you know, my family, although they were there for me, you know, they kind of did wash their hands with me a little bit because, you know, they they just felt helpless, I suppose. And um I actually I was sat on this thing and I fell back onto the bridge. I was fucking crying my eyes out and all that. And I remember, I've never ever prayed in my life and I fucking got on my knees and I said, please, whatever you are, fucking help me. I cannot do this anymore. And um, I walked away from the bridge. Um, and I went home and I remember just going into my mum, just fucking crying my eyes out. And I said, mum, I can't fucking do this anymore. I need to go to rehab. And um, she was like, okay. And she was crying herself. She was like, thank you. And uh, yeah. Two days later, I ended up in a treatment centre uh, in Luton. Sorry. That's all right, mate. Uh, yeah, and uh, my dad took me there. It was so, it was so, it was such a surreal thing, do you know what I mean? Like, But it was like a weight had been lifted off my shoulders. You know, and I, I know people go, oh, yeah, whatever. But it was, it really was. It felt like, okay, I, I'm, I've accepted, you know, and I'm done. I'm fucking surrendered. I am done with it. I can't do this anymore. Got to the treatment centre. Daniela Westbrook's there. Literally walked in. My old man's like telling me, he's like, fucking Daniela Westbrook. Not worrying about me. That's fucking, he's more starstruck by her. And um, so anyway, I've gone in. And that was it. And then I say he went home and I stayed. I, I, I only booked in for 10 days. Um, I think got sick to like six days in. And I was like, I'm staying, I want to stay for a month. I want this. I'm ready. I'm ready to, I'm ready to, to do this. And I say, yeah, I got introduced. It was a 12 step, um, treatment center so in there i got obviously introduced to ca and aa um and i think for me i just it took me a few days to really like come around because i don't know if you know but you know when you're coming off the gear it's not like heroin or anything like that because you're not you know you're not physically dependent you know like you are heroin but it was just horrible my head was all over the place and i think because i blotted out all my emotions for so long they all came back at once mm. do you know what i mean and it was just like everything had hit me i remember my um my brother, his partner was pregnant at the time, and I hadn't even thought about that. And then it hit me, and I remember ringing him and crying, like, oh, you're having a baby? And he's like, yeah, I know. <laughs> but it was like, do you know what I mean? It was like it, I would, I'd just opened up and been like, this is real, I'm going to be an uncle. Do you know what I mean? All these little things, and it, my emotions were all over the place, do you know what I mean? But 
And that's one thing I've heard people say in recovery is a good thing about recovery is you get your emotions back. And a bad thing about recovery is you get your emotions yeah. back. Because it's like, yeah. you know, I've dealt, I, the reason why I drunk and used for so long is to blot all them out, mm. you know, because I can't deal with my own head. Mm. So I got introduced to A, Alcoholics Anonymous. Um, started going through the steps. Mm. I don't know whether you've done the steps yourself. I have No, I yeah. Um, so got introduced to the steps and um, started going through it. But it was in like a, um, like a booklet form instead mm. of just going through the book. Started going through it all, mate. And I just identified with everything. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And I remember my first group session in there, There was a, uh, the people were talking and I was all like judgmental. You know yeah. what we're like. I was thinking, like, he's a fucking heroin addict. I ain't that bad. Yeah. yeah. You know, as you do when you're in the room, you think, why is he looking at me? Mm. Or well, she's mm. all right. Do you know what I mean? And all that. <laughs> yeah. You do, though. Yeah. And you're just like, you ain't in tune with it yet. No. Yeah. And someone sat up and it was like, oh, um, do you, uh, is there anything you want to say? And I was I was angry at that time. Do you know what I mean? I was like, I don't want to fucking say anything. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Fuck off like that. And I remember there was this old guy, I'm not say old, he was probably like 65 alcoholic, he comes, he goes, oh, I think you're you're going to be sharing a room with me. I said, I ain't fucking sharing a room with you, you old cunt like that. Wow. And he was like, what, what? And I was just like, fuck off away from me. I was so angry, so angry. And the only thing I said in there, I said to him, the only thing I, the, the only thing I feel right now is that there's no middle of the road. I mean, if we're up here or I'm down there, and the council guy turned around and said, well, you're in the right place, don't they? Wow. Yeah. And I think from there on, listening to other people share, I just thought these people have got something here. This is real. Do you know what I mean? A, a lot, obviously, people used to, were using the God word and all that thing in there. And I was just like, I ain't fucking interested in that. You know, I'm not religious. Hmm. But then it started to, it's a spiritual program. Yeah. Not a religious one. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I think um, I haven't been put off by the twelve step program at all. I just, I just, it, it would, it was intimidating for me. Yeah. Like I was a bit scared. You know, it's like it's kind of like a, another layer of admit, admitting like how yeah. bad your problem was. And I think I wanted to try and because. Cr- I think that there's different levels to addiction, different levels to how bad you were. I mean, uh, you know, I was I was having blowouts at the weekends that were affecting my whole life. You know, my whole week, and yeah, yeah. I was. I, I was drinking a lot, but I was never like a daily user. So I, I think I felt a bit guilty about, about going to a 12-step program because I didn't think I was as bad as that. But I, but after speaking to people like yourself, I think it's something I am going to look at just to learn. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. and uh, I was also put off by the God thing like you were, but I think that the way to get your head around that is to not look at it as like God but to look at it as like a, like you said, like a spiritual thing, you can just replace that word God with the universe or whatever yeah, you believe in. It's yeah. a higher power of your own conception. Yeah, exactly. So that was one of the main things that when I started looking, because you look at a book and it was like, oh, you know, God, blah, blah. I was thinking like, I ain't religious. I don't want to know about this. Yeah. And then you start going through the booklets, listening to people talk about their own experiences. Yeah. And I was like, fuck, I feel like that. Or I yeah. felt like that. Yeah. So how are they now like clean? You know, what have they yeah. done? And, I remember the first chair that I heard in a in a uh, one of the meetings I went to there it was a guy who actually was a scaffolder and he said he'd done his story and I was just bursting up in tears because I was like that bloke has just pretty much shared my story mm. and he, you know he'd come he'd come out the end of it and um, I kind of had like a thing as well when I went in there because I was so young I thought like you know I can't how am I gonna, what am I going to do for the rest of my life Yeah, I felt the same. Yeah. All I've ever done is drunk and used and had a good time, blah blah, but. My head didn't go to the bad times. It went straight to the good times. Yeah, that's the addict. Yeah, yeah do you know what I'm saying? So it was like, oh, you know, yeah, but it wasn't that bad or whatever. That, that's why I, how I was feeling at that time. It's scary, isn't it, that you're there learning about it and trying to convince yourself to go back mm. already. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And, but luckily, I feel like because I was in the treatment centre, I was in there. Yeah. And it's I, the environment. It's your environment. That's the main thing. I had to be taken out of society, man. And yeah. I think that was the best thing that ever happened to me was going in there and learning about myself. I feel like... I really didn't know who I was. And that was the scariest part for me is when people, you know, ask, oh, you know, what do you like? Or blah, blah, blah. I just think like, I don't know. I don't mm. really care. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But, it's weird. But that's not how to live life. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, if you don't know, I had no purpose. I felt useless. Do you know what I mean? Even though I had, I had a job and all these sort of things, I just, I didn't really know where I wanted to go or who I was or, mm. I just think it's really scary how, it can take away, literally strip you as a person, mm. you know, these the drugs and also, you know, people around you. You know, people I grew up with, you know, they distanced themselves from me. You know, people I went to school with, they were just like, 
Almost yeah, but so. you don't see it at the time. You th- you no. think you think to yourself that they got a problem or they're just not yeah. like me, or or your ego comes in. You go, it's because I'm successful. Yeah, or yeah, yeah. It's because. But I think that what you said about your your brother that was really poignant to me. What you said about your brother and um and his uh you know and you becoming an uncle. Um, what I didn't realize that we do, and you'll probably realize this now as well, is in between. Even if even for the lads or the girls out there that are like you know twice two three times big sessions a week or whatever when you're not at the pub you're thinking about going to the pub Mm. and when you're not drinking you're think you're thinking about drinking you know and what we don't realize what we're doing but this is for people that can't control their drinking and drug use is that we're always wishing away our weeks right so if you imagine you know you and it's the major major thing about depression and anxiety the, the major thing about depression and anxiety is either living in the past, so you're worried about what you've done. That's like your depression, I feel, you know, where you're sort of living in the past. Mm. Or the anxiety is like, what's going to happen in the future? When am I getting this? What's going on here? Um, and then you're never in the now. You're never present, looking. Yeah. You're never in the present. You're, no. you're, you're looking like looking forward to the weekend and you're wishing these weeks away. Yeah, yeah. And, and these weeks, like, like for me, I related to my kids. These weeks are the best. These are the best weeks of my life. Yeah. They're fucking four and six years old. These I shouldn't be wishing this time away, yeah. but we're just wishing to be drinking, yeah, yeah. and that's the addict. So when you stop drinking and that, and then you suddenly it's like the blinkers come off. It's like yeah. you c- come out of the clouds, yeah, isn't yeah. it? It's like the clarity comes, and you're like, this whole life is going on around me. Yeah. I didn't even fucking know no. it. I was just, you know, but it's hard. Like I can still feel even four years later that you're emotionally attached to, yeah, to, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. to the to the to the things you done wrong or you ignored or you forgot or you didn't realise you were doing. It's still it's dark. I, I've got it inside me. I can feel it, but it is also beautiful, isn't it? Like to be to be free of it. To be I, free. Yeah, of I it. think ultimately for me it was like, you know, people say, "Oh, you'll be free." You know, there's a bit in the book of people like oh, you. You know, you can live in the fourth uh, the fourth dimension. You. you and I was just like, this is all bollocks. You know what I mean, yeah. I just want to stop drinking and using. So when I stopped drinking and using, when you go through the program, it's like you realise that it isn't the drinking drugs. It's you. Mm. It's my head. Mm. So I believe that I was born, you know, with this ad- addict. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And obviously as a child, I say, only now I look back with the obsess- obsessive stuff. Mm. But, I, you know, I couldn't deal with my emotions as a kid. You know, my default was anger. Mm. Do you know what I mean? If you know, I would just go straight to anger. So I think now, like being in recovery, it's just mm. learned me to pause. It's learned me to understand other mm. people. Yeah, and be more in tune with your own emotions. 100%. Like I, I think that's the biggest thing I've learned from sobriety this time is understanding my thought, like realizing their thoughts. Do you know what I mean? Getting a thought in your, like for me, the triggers, like I still get it now. I was in Mexico. I've just flew back yesterday from Mexico. I was in Mexico for. Uh, 10 days and throughout that holiday I had a number of t- times mm. you know a couple of silly I call them silly times where I was like oh I fancy a beer a number of silly times where I was just like I was by the pool everyone was drinking and towards the afternoon about 2-3 o'clock you can see everyone's getting pissed yeah, and yeah, start yeah, fucking yeah, yeah. mingling around yeah. talking to each other and the Americans are hey man where yeah. are you from and like, when you're sober you're like mate fuck off do you yeah, know what I mean yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but I'm like oh I wish I was on their vibe a little because yeah. then you'd be like yeah where in yeah. America are you from and start yeah. chatting complete cod shit yeah, yeah. but because I was in Mexico I know what would have happened I would have been like can you get any yeah, 100% yeah, 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 yeah. so but when that when well, there was a couple of silly times I call them where where it's like oh I quite fancy a beer I wouldn't mind being in the mix of this uh, and then I'm like shut up you dickhead but there was a couple of like serious times where I was like I want to get fucked up like I want to get fucked up mm. and now I can hear that voice in my head and I look at it as a voice it's not me I see it like as the addiction yeah, 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 yeah. so it's the like because because normal everyday people yeah like you said I reckon I was born with it as well I think you're right normal everyday people they don't get to the end of the week and they go. I want to get fucking annihilated. Yeah, I, I yeah. want to get smashed. I yeah, want because yeah, yeah. if you look at the word smashed, annihilated, wasted, wankered, cunted. Ooh, yeah. I don't know if you can say that, but on the thing. But um think of all the words that we use. That's not normal behavior. It's destruction, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The normal person out there, and some of them will probably be watching this podcast just just to learn or whatever. The normal person that can drink and use drugs is like, oh, I might have a couple of beers tonight. And occasionally they're like, oh, I'll have a little bump then. And they're like, they start getting fucked and they're like, do you know what? That's and enough that's for enough. me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, no, yeah like, that's what I never understood. Yeah. But I'd always think that about people like, you know, you go out for, to the pub with someone, they go, I'm just going to have one or two and I'm going to go. And I just think like, how? What? Yeah. Oh, what? they'll leave half a pint. That yeah. fucking winds me up. That yeah, does. Yeah, and I yeah. think, like, what are you doing? Yeah. Put it in my own. Yeah. 
but that's that's the problem, mate. Yeah, and so I think that it's it's great for people to watch this because they'll definitely be able to relate to if you if, if it's an illness, man, and it's yeah. escapism. It's like the truth, the very truth, and the bones and the core of it is this. If you want to get annihilated, smashed, and fucking wankered, then you've got a problem. That is it, right? Um, and it's up to you. Do you want to... Because... And I say this saying, like, you know, instead of using the weekend to... It's quite a poignant saying, and I, I wish I'd come up with it, but I stole it off Instagram. It's instead of using your, your weekend to escape the life you've got, you should use it to try and build the life you want, right? Mm -hmm. So I always thought to myself... Mm -hmm. Fucking, it's stressful having two kids. It's stressful. They're doing my head in. It's very stressful. My wife's fucking northern. She's on me fucking back. I'm sh fucking struggling, trying to stay relevant, funny, work, sell tickets, do this, do that. I've got multiple businesses. It's stressful. I've got to get fucked. Yeah, I've got yeah. to escape. But the truth of it is, mate, I'm going to look back one day when, when I'm older, just like you. You're going to look back and be like, mate, I wish I could go back to that time. It was the best time of yeah. my life. So really, you want to be here. You want to be present. Yeah, but it's but it's scary, isn't it? Because it is scary. The, yeah. You're not getting annihilated at the time and getting fucked. That was the good bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know. It, I think you know, be, getting into recovery and going through the program. Actually, them saying to me that this is an illness, mm. and for me, was like, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I, I just thought this was going to be my life, I and this is I how was it just is. Fucked up. Yeah, and then like you know, they they start explaining the illness, and I'm just like. Mm. Oh, fucking why didn't I know this before yeah but I feel like I wasn't open to it you kind of shut yourself off mm. from it and I think to learn that you know the spiritual malady the mm. obsession of the mind yeah you know and um, what's that the obsession of the mind obsession of the mind the uh, spiritual malady and the physical allergy so you know the physical allergy once I put one in me it triggers like an, almost like an allergic reaction you know the phenomenon of craving once you put one in you you can't stop yeah. The obsession of the mind is like you've already said. So when I haven't got it, I obsess about having it. When I've got it, I obsess that I ain't got enough. Wow. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And then it just carries on. So mm. you're always obsessing about it. You know, but even if you've got it or if you haven't got it, you're always obsessing about yeah. it. Yeah. And it, for me, it was like, you know, I couldn't do anything without having some. So yeah. I, I'd, I'd, I'd had like loads of different coats in my, um, thing and I would put bags in different coats so just I, in case you picked the wrong coat up well, you had no, some. I, just so people didn't know I could just grab any bit of clothing I weren't always rustling around that's mad so I put the coat and go out yeah and I knew that I had some mm. do you know what I mean so like but even if I'd go for a family meal I had to get on it mm. it was like before I'd be thinking like don't even want to eat you know it's like when you get mm. on it you can't eat yeah pushing the food around the fucking plate mm. um so it was like everything I'd done. It you know, was, I was, I was an opportunity to do gear, yeah. Yeah, but any anything. Do you know what I mean? Or if I saw a pub, like, oh, that looks nice. It's a pub. <laughs> but I'd be like, let's go and have a drink. Do you know what I mean? They might, have, they might do a few different beers. Mm, yeah, you're chatting shit. Of course you are. I just want to go in there and get on it. That's the truth. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. I just wanted to drink all the time. and uh, mm. to, But to learn about the illness yeah. was a massive relief for me. And it really, you know, when it said, you know, about the physical allergy, once you put one in you... Mm triggers off the phenomenon of craving I was just like fucking that's me because once I do one yeah I'm like yeah I think I think mate listen I think because you're like a clearly like a lad's lad and I think um it it it, it it's fucking powerful that you I mean I'm sorry that you had to get to such a dark place mm. um I rang the Samaritans once when I, I thought about suicide and it was I was writing a mix of using and using yeah, and using yeah, yeah. and I honestly think that um well I don't know if there's a God or the universe, but thank whoever was looking over you or gave you the strength yeah. to come back. But um, I think I think that it's a very real situation for men out there that right now, you know, there's there's levels to where you got to. Like you said, you started off just having a few, then you were doing it on your own, and then it was becoming like during the day, and it was just it became such a horrible thing to you that you know you weren't even enjoying it, but you had to do it. And the, I, I guarantee you that 100 percent there'd be people that are watching this now that are stuck in that stage. And I think it's very important to say to them like it might not be that stage that kills you. Mm -hmm. It might just take like one big life event, someone in your family may be dying mm. or something bad happening or just like three weeks of fucking work, mm. something in your life that could just push you over to the edge to where you're in your mind, you're just like, I can't fucking take this no, anymore. No, no, yeah, yeah. And um, that's how close you are. So it's so important to, 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 to see it for what it is. What would you say to anyone that's watching that, uh, is going through what you went through. Like, what what would you what would you say? It will be okay. It will be okay. 
I think the old, you know, when like I said before, when you're in that hole, it really does. It feels like you're. It's never going to end. Mm. You know, and it's like um, no matter where you turn, you constantly feel like crippled by this. But it will be okay. And I think you know, the drink and drugs are just, are just the, the solution to our heads. Yeah. And that for me was like what? Because I only stopped drinking and using it because I wanted to. I needed. I thought that that was the problem, and that was why I was the way I was. But I, you know, that's not why I'm the way I was because I. It's because of my head. Hmm. Do you know what I mean? So I think I would say to anyone that's caught up in that is, you know, don't give up. Yeah. Don't give up on yourself. You know, not don't give up on the people around you. It will be okay. You know, if things do change. Well, I yeah. think ultimately, you, know, you said at the start, you know, you've got to change everything. But, you know, little changes, mm. they're massive. Yeah. If you're in that hole, you know what I mean, and you make a small change, mm. fucking well done. Fucking right. Power to you, man. And and definitely, like, I think that's something we can definitely hold on to, I'm going to take from this podcast, is that we're just a bit different. We can't we can't drink, we can't consume like other people can consume. Um, so if that's you at the moment, you've had a good time, you've had a good run at it, you've enjoyed yeah. it, maybe it's time to just look at it and go, look, I can't do it anymore. And, you know... Like me and you both said, I, 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 was, I was the same as well. Like I, I, I was like, I can't fucking be in my life at the moment. I need to get out of my life uh, in regards to when you said you, you needed to escape society. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, if you can't afford to go to rehab or I don't know if you can get rehab on the NHS or whatever, uh, in order to escape your your society or whatever, the, I think the first thing you've got to do is fucking tell someone that you're fucking seriously struggling. Mm. Because that what that will do is like when you walked into your mum, and you told your mum, I bet, I mean, there must have been conversations between you where they were going, you're a fucking mess, didn't it? But yeah. when you went to them and, yeah, exactly. and went, help me, yeah. like, and you said it, it's like, and and that's why I scream and shout about it on social media and people get pissed off about it. I'm like, but if I tell the world that I'm a fucking addict and I've got a problem, I have to sort my shit out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. I have to. It's like, so I think that's a big thing. And also... um, just stay away from people for a while. Stay away. Like if when you become like we are mm. now, where we've got our heads around it, we don't want to go back. Then you can start mixing again, and yeah. I mean, you probably won't want to. To be honest, no, that's right. You don't. You, you probably won't want to. But don't. That's the biggest fear, I think, especially for for geezers like me and you. That's the biggest fear is you live a certain life, and the truth of it is, you've got to leave that life behind, and that's that's the scary thing. And what would you say to anyone that's feeling? suicidal I think that's that's that that was that yeah I don't even know what to say about that but what would you say to anyone that's that's high, like that's that's walking towards that bridge in yeah. their mind um it's a difficult question that mm, I know yeah yeah um or yeah I, I mean think it's a similar thing really if don't give up you know don't I wouldn't say don't let this win, you know, because that's probably not the right way of putting it. But, you know, just don't give up. It will get better. And I think just ask for help. You know, I think when you're in that, like, you know, drinking and using, that word help, it's just like, oh, no, that's not for me. You know, because it's like, you know, like you said, it's not a geezer thing to do, is it? Blokes don't speak. I can't ask for help. As soon as I asked for help, help came. Yeah, it's like a relief, isn't it? Of course it is. And I just, you know, I I think... um, just, yeah, it's, it's difficult to say about that. I can't. Yeah, yeah I know. You don't, I, I know what you mean. You don't want to advise on it, do you? Because no, yeah. you, you don't want to say the wrong thing. But I guess I guess the advice that we can take from it is is how you survived it, which is, like you said, by asking for help. But but also, it can come about quickly, can't it? That f- yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, it just, you know, I didn't, when I was a kid, I didn't think, oh, one day I hope I'm gonna, I want to kill myself. Do you know what I mean? It's not something that you plan for a long time. And I think it was, it was over a long period that I was like grinding it, myself down. Yeah, things happened. Do you know what I mean? I, I, I let a lot of people down. I, I've upset a lot of people. I've done a lot of wrong things. And that plays on your guilt. Resentment. Yeah, and I get resentful with myself. Then you know what I mean? Like the guilt, the shame, yeah, all the this stuff is like, mm. you know. And immediately you like start thinking about them things you have done. You think you know oh, I can never. It's make- better. It's better not to face them. Yeah, so, yeah. So I'll just kill myself. Oh, you know, everyone have such a better life without me. Yeah, that's your mentality. Is like yeah. they'll live. Uh, you know, my missus will be so much better off if mm. I wasn't here. Are you still with your missus? Same missus now. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So I went to treatment. We, when I went to treatment, she left me alone. And you know, when I come out of treatment, I, I didn't think there was an opportunity to get back together. And I, you know, I had to make my amends to her. 
and to her family. And uh, yeah, after a period of time, we got we got back together, which for me was like, uh, you know, I think all of the things that have happened to me in recovery, I, I owe to the program that I'm doing, you know, and uh, and also my higher power. Do you know what I mean? I know people go, what's that? But, you know, that's what I do. You know, I wake up in the morning, I pray, you know, I, I hand my day over to something else because I fucked my own life up. <laughs> that's fucking, that's I, so deep, man. You, like, like, you can't, like, don't yeah. give it to me. Take it. Wow, that's a great way to look at it. And you don't know if it's God or what, or... I just call it God because it's just easier. But yeah. it, it's, you know, at the end of it's the day... It's a higher power. It's yeah. something else. It's, you, it's a you, belief. Yeah. I mean, can you stop it from raining? Can you stop the sun from coming out? No. So there's something bigger than me because ultimately we are so selfish... That when I was drinking news, I thought that I fucking run, you know, I mean, everything was had to be, I had to control everything, you know, mm. had to be the way I wanted it. But now, you know, there's, I'm just another human being. Yeah, the ego's gone. Uh, yeah, ultimately, it's like, you know, and I st obviously I still have my character defects, you know, yeah. my ego can come back out, my ego can reconstruct, but I think that's why I have a sponsor. Mm. that I speak to on a daily he's like whoa, whoa, whoa. That's, that don't sound right what you're talking about do you about. know what you're, do you, you realise that you're like a fucking fountain of knowledge mate would you <laughs> would you have ever thought that you'd be sitting here nah. talking talking about like talking about like how to better your life I mean that's why people should that's why you don't I mean somebody put a message up on the, on. I've just done James English podcast again and someone put a message up oh there's so much negative stuff of you online now all this all this drinking and I think it's positive that's I'm glad positive. I'm glad positive. I'm glad that um that I went through what I went through. And, I, I, you know, I'm sorry that you went through what you went through. But the beautiful thing about it is, look how much we've got to talk about, how intelligent you are now. Like, without being funny, like, when, when I was drinking and using, my comedy was about drinking and using and fucking shagging birds and uh, whatever. When I was down the pub, I was talking about fights and fucking dumb shit. Now, I feel like I've got something to talk about. And you're all fucking wealth of knowledge, mate. Yeah, so. I, yeah. I just think, you know, you every, like you said before, everything changes. Yeah. And I think you look at things differently. That was like the main thing that I started to realise about myself is that I looked at everything differently. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Even like being in the car driving, you know, it's like road rage. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I found as soon as I started going, oh, I'd done the steps and all that, someone would be like to me, like, fuck off. And I'm like, all right, mate. Yeah, know? yeah. Whereas no, before, it, I'm not getting out and all yeah, that. I'm like, yeah. fuck off because... I don't know. It's that ego thing, isn't it? Yeah, like, you can't it, do that to yeah, me. It's the ego. It is. It is. I don't. I feel. I, yeah. Everything is different to me now. Like what's important is different to me. Yeah. It's because, and I think it's because you're not chasing your next high. You're not. You're not living in a state of when you're when you're in your addiction. And I, 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 don't, I know it's hard because it, like in the step program and all stuff. Like that, they, they, you keep on saying I'm an addict. You know that you mm. meant. To, you're meant to say you know. Hi, my name's Dan and I'm an addict to sort of say, you know, to, to be at one with your problem and to yeah, know yeah. that. But I prefer to say when I was an addict because mm. I was in the addiction. Yeah, yeah. But I don't know. That's each to their own. But um, but you, I don't know, because it's in you, isn't it? So it's a scary. Yeah, it's, gonna yeah, it's never going to go away. I know. It's, I know. So it's. Yeah, I don't know. That's something that I'm just wrestling with. But but I feel like when you're in your addiction, when you when you when you are in the midst of drinking, even if it's like weekends and everything like that, when you you are in a state of fucking. Where's my next yeah, fucking yeah, drink? Yeah, 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 yeah. So when someone says something, like, I find it weird being peaceful. I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Do you find that peacefulness weird? Yeah. No, I think, yeah, because I think it's, it's chaos and carnage. Yeah. That uh, For me, default is that's what it is. Chaos and carnage. Carnage that, that, is that, my that, default. Yeah. And my default. That's where we live normally. Yeah, and yeah. I, that's where my addict is comfortable. Yeah. In my head. So, you know, and that's why now... Just because I don't drink and use doesn't mean that I can't be a fucking arsehole because this is so cunning and baffling, this illness, that any little way it can get in, mm. you know, I love it. People say to me, you know, when we're in a, like, in a meeting or whatever, they'll be like, you know, my addict's out there now doing fucking push-ups waiting for me. <laughs> yeah. Because it is, it's out there ready to get you on the next thing. Yeah. And there's so many different ways. It might not be drinking or using, it might be other little ways. It, mate, it, I, I, my, my addict's been uh, playing, playing up at me yeah. recently, mate. It is like, I don't know if it was Mexico or what, but it was like, I've had little fucking maybe maybe I could do golf trips and just get fucked while I'm away yeah, and no, come back no. and no one will know yeah, 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 and yeah, shit yeah. like that yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and you know talking myself dirty seedy little conversations yeah. in my mind yeah, and I'm yeah, like yeah. I'm like <laughs> but ultimately mate well, we are we have twisted thinking so before all of this our thinking is warped mm. our thinking is warped mate that is why we drink and use it's because we can't deal with the shit that's going on in our head we can't deal with our emotions we can't deal with life there's too much going on I need to fucking get out of this like you said before I need to drink feel better now and then once you do a bit of packet 
oh, I feel great. Yeah. Oh, no, I feel even worse. Mm. Well, do you know what? Do you know what I think it is? It's because we're not focusing on our thoughts. We're focusing on a feeling. Mm. So for me, like being like, oh, like, like wavy. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, because like basically right now, I'm just like, I'm normal. I don't feel any imbalance. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't feel nothing. But when I'm drunk, it's like a feeling. I know that my my, my fucking my my skills are off. I'm like, and when I sniff, it's like I'm all like euphoric and stuff like that. And I'm focusing on that instead of focusing on. Do you know what? I got to get this done. I got to do that. I got to do this. And blah, blah. so yeah, it's fucking interesting. It's been good talking to you, mate. Thank you. Very interesting. No, fella. thanks for having me on. It. Oh, it's been a privilege, mate. It really has. I know. You know, for me, I just want to. Help, even if I help one person. I think, I, mean, you're, I think you're going to help more than that, mate. Um, we get a great response from the podcast, but 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 yeah, it's not nice to openly talk about some of the stuff we go through. But I guess in your fact, your your missus, your family, and everyone around you now, they know what you've been through, and they're probably quite proud of you. Well, yeah, they have definitely yeah, yeah. got to be proud of you. Do you know yeah, what I mean? So. Um, and that's that that that. I'll just finish on this. I think um, I, I I do get some, and I think they tell you to do this in the style. 12 step program as well um, go going and writing your wrongs have you done that yeah so talking to people that you've wronged yeah so that's the immense process yeah so, so was there many for you to oh mate loads like what stuff and stuff that I thought that I, you know I can't go and do that I can't go and speak to them what, what I've done to them I can't do that was it like money stuff or fighting or yeah do you know what I mean uh, just loads of different stuff like you know things that you would do Whilst you're using and drinking. Yeah. And did you approach people that wanted to punch your head in and say sorry yeah, to Yeah, I remember, and it was, this is I put down to my higher power again, is that, you know, I'm chatting to my sponsor, I'm like, mate, I can't make it. He's like, you're fucking making this immense. And I'm like, all right, I kept putting it off. And then I'll be in the petrol station, there they are right next to me. And I think that's, you know, my higher power. And what did you do? I speak to my sponsor, him. I'm like, mate, he's fucking here. And he's like, go and speak to him. Now's the time. You know, he's been put in your path. Wow, that's crazy. Well, what was do that it. about? If you don't mind me asking, can you say or not really? I can't really say. No, I, but yeah, did you yeah. go and speak to them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he, he, obviously I'm like, you know, so, you know, what I've done. And he's, I was expecting him to go, right, you fucking whatever. And he was like, listen, mate, it's cool. Well, wow. well done, you know. And I, and well, I was, did you say you've gone sober and you're yeah, right and you're I'm wrong? in recovery. You know, and part of my program is to make an amends, you know, and it, but I obviously went through what I'd done. You know, some of the people didn't even know that I'd done these things. Do you oh, know what I mean? Fuck, that's deep. And then they're like, "Well, you know, some people turn around and went, fuck off, I never want to see you again." But that's okay because I've cleared my side of the street. Yeah, okay, but that's hard. That is, yeah. There was stuff in there to do with um, stealing cars from big garages. Oh God! And I had to go into this garage, and I said, to him, "I was like, mate, I'm gonna if this goes, I can end up going to prison." And he's like. You got to do it. Mate. Oh my god, that's crazy! So I've gone in there, and I'm like, I speak to the manager, and I've sat down, and uh, I was like, look, fucking uh, this year, bloody blah, blah, I took these cars and all this stuff, and uh, he's like, look, we have no evidence of it. Thank you for coming in. Um, I wish you all the best in your recovery. And I was just like, <laughs> just staring at him like that, and I left. And fucking nicked a couple more cars. Took, <laughs> took a few more keys. No, yeah. No, that, yeah, and I was just like, but I think, I don't, I don't even know why, you know, and I, I keep saying about the higher power thing, but, you know, something is, yeah, it's how just, I didn't die while I was drinking and using. Yeah. Someone was, my. I believe my higher power was with me the whole time, but I wasn't willing to open up to it and allow him in. Yeah, there's definitely something, there's definitely, you know, when, when people say, what am I going to do? What, this is what we're finished on. When people say, what am I going to do? Like me and you were looking there going, oh, because I do miss the pub and I do miss my mates and I do miss the packet and I do miss, I, I always say, I don't miss it. I feel like I'm free of it. I do feel like I'm free of it, but there's a part of me that's always going to miss it because that was my life and I enjoyed it. And when I was in the mix of it, I was like, how am I going to give this up? Mm -hmm. What else am I going to have? Yeah, well, yeah. I'll tell you what you'll have is fucking self-development. Do you know what I mean? Like, and you'll find whatever it is, your higher power and you'll start fucking seeing the beauty in the world, wouldn't you? Definitely, mate. What a conversation, mate. Much, mate. I'm sorry that I was interrupting at the beginning. Cool, my ADHD cool. is mad. Everyone's just like, <laughs> let him talk. So when we got into it, I tried to like step back, but you're so insightful, mate. It, it made me want to fucking like, these, these conversations, it's so hard for me not to be like, oh yeah, because that made me think of this and yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. But I wanted to let you tell your story and and, and I honestly think it will. And um, I want to have him back. So we'll have you back at some point. I might yeah, get probably. like some group stuff going with a yeah, few yeah, of us. Yeah. And um, in a different time, you know, yeah. we would have been in a different oh, place. Mate. Well, we were, weren't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In Waterloo.
Thank, thank you, Harry, mate. Thank, thank you, you so very much. much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys. Uh, wow, this is it's like a count, John. It's like a counselling session, mm, isn't it? That we learn from. Oh man, it's, it's yeah. Uh, yeah. It's transcendent. It's like dipping into the spiritual and the, yeah, yeah, it's great. And um, I just want to say a massive thank you to everyone that's tuned in. Um, I've been crazy, crazy busy. Um, but I'm, 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 I'm really, really sort of enjoying this journey that we're all going on. Please, if you know anyone that's struggling, um, give them, give them a, give them an at in this, tag them in this, wherever you're watching this or listening to this, give us feedback. Harry, can they get you on Instagram while I've got you I don't here? don't have any social media. All right. That's probably good because yeah, the, a lot of the guests that have come on here have been bombarded with people, but I mean, they just normally reach out and say thank you. So, yeah, yeah. but you know, you'll see it, you'll see it in the comments. Make sure you read the comments of the thing when it comes out but yeah harry's not on social media but um uh and uh, not allowed in car garages anymore <laughs> things, but i'm only joking but thank you very much harry and listen guys subscribe share it for us and if you've got an interest in the story like harry um these things that we're going through ultimately um we can get through them but if you've got an interesting story about your background if you've overcome something like harry has here and you've become an inspiring person and you've learned from it and you think your journey could help other people i want to hear it let me know dm me leave a comment on the on the youtube video or whatever and let's get you on the podcast thank you to our sponsors thank you john and thank you again Aaron. thank you very much thank you. Oh, yes. And don't forget, if you want to come and see me live and meet me, I'm going on tour. The Daniel O'Reilly Outer Character Full UK Tour kicks off in January 2024 and tickets are on sale right now. I'm going to try and get out and meet as many of you as possible. And of course, I'm going to be bringing the laughs all over the UK. There's 23 dates right now and I'm adding more all the time. Hit the link in the bio and get your tickets now and come have some fun. If you're going through a tough time at the moment, please don't suffer in silence. Feel free to pick up the phone and contact any of these helplines. I personally, myself, at one of my darkest points, contacted the Samaritans and it completely changed my outlook and got me out of a really deep, dark place. A problem shared really is a problem halved. So if you don't feel confident talking to those around you, check out any of these organizations and give them a call. This is my Facebook group, just simply search on Facebook, Men and Their Emotions. It's for men only, uh, but once you're in there, you can talk anonymously about your problems and help others and just feel a little bit of community. So come join the conversation, Men and Their Emotions, on Facebook. Thanks for watching. Menace of sobriety. Just a menace. Just, just a menace. Just a menace. Menace of sobriety. Just a menace. Just, just a menace.